Beloved, we continue in our theme, generosity, um, based on the four-week devotional by Gordon McDonald. And, and this week, we will discuss, don't be evil. Don't be evil. Now, some of you may be uncomfortable with this next question, but I have to share with you, it's a pressing question. By any chance, does anybody already have picked out what they're going to wear on the 31st? <laughs> Business attire, I'm working. Business attire, I'm working. <laughs> you, you don't have your Halloween costume picked out? No. You, you, you're wearing it. <laughs> Dear friends, everybody else is ready. The neighbors have all of their decorations out. Um, now see, in theory, I don't participate for a host of reasons. I have my own and I can give you some theological reasons that I may or may not. But to be honest with you, that doesn't wash with my wife and with my son. So a couple of weeks ago, they were trying to tell me that our family outfit should be the Incredibles. <laughs> I kind of get it. It looks kind of funny. I'm still considering it. That's just entertaining. And, and even we have the daughter who's in the house, but we really don't see her, so she kind of fits the role as well. But we're prepared for evil, goose, ghosts and goblins and all of that. So since you don't have your costumes ready, can anybody help me define evil? What is evil? Absence of good. Absence of good? A anybody else? We'll agree with Bill, absence of good? Sinful behavior. What about morally bad? Causing harm or injury to someone marked by bad luck or bad events. So we'll submit to all of those. What if I told you that that was not God's definition of evil? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, the love of money is the root of all kinds of... Huh. It is through craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Let's break that down. To have strong feelings for our constant affection towards money is the root, the cause or source, is the thing that grows in our heart and will be held in place as we move from godly living towards evil. Now, as we watch all the decorations in place and prepare to be hypocritical of myself, while I may not dress up, the candy is quite good. I mean, I, I think it's just my spousely duty, fatherly duty, to test the candy before they eat it, whether it's evil or not. But how scared would you be if somebody dressed up as money. We might think that they're on to something. It becomes a costume that we may want to emulate. Where did you get that? Did that grow on trees? Can I have some? Please note that the text does not say that money itself is evil, because it's not. When properly understood as a provision from God, to help us sustain this body and life, and not as something that should define and control our thoughts and actions, money is quite good. So then how does the love of money become evil? From our text, we see that having a love for money, or a constant affection for what we assume money can do and generate, is where evil takes place. When you have a craving for money, any foodies in the place, you understand a craving. You know, as the craving is going through my mind for a three-layer carrot cake with a cream and cheese. See, there's another. When you have that type of craving for money, when you have an abnormal desire or longing for it, if you get in the way of me getting to Baker Square for a slice of carrot cake 
we have a problem. God tells us when we have that kind of mentality towards money that people cannot get in our way, that our lives cannot interrupt our desire to have more money, we are looking at evil. God tells us when we live like this, we are not free as his children. We are being controlled by material things that bring us no satisfaction, bring us no joy, and they provide for us a life of slavery and not a life of freedom. And then the Son, Jesus Christ, has come to set us free, and now we have a problem. Because our lives are being controlled by something that enslaves us. For a moment, consider with me uh, evil that is generated by the love of money. I submit to you Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What will you eat or what will you drink? Nor about your body. What will you put on? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Worry. Worry. It's amazing to me that in our society, both poor and wealthy alike, believe that if we have an abundance of money, we can control things like food and clothing. I, I do it myself, don't, don't fret. The Powerball is up to a 90 million. The Mega Millions is at 160, I pass it every morning as I come in. And, and I begin to wonder what we could begin to do as ministry, what we could begin to do as a family. What? But I happen to know some people who actually have some millions, and guess what worry they have? What could I do if I had more? So you, you see, poor and wealthy alike have the same worry. And that's not living. God tells us, isn't life more than that? Isn't life more than food? Isn't life more than drink? Jesus takes us deeper. And he says, when you think like this and you crave money and increase worry, you prevent yourself from relying on God's provision. Here's what happens when we are not free to be generous or biblically speaking, when we are evil. We underestimate and devalue our heavenly place here on earth. Family, we fail to realize that we are children of the Most High God, and because of this reality, everything we need will be taken care of. So as we open our hands and open our hearts to be generous, we can trust that God will be generous, not in return, but in advance. Consider with me Psalm 37, verse 5. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. Wow. Well, you just told me I was evil, so now how am I righteous? Well, thank you. Romans chapter 3, verse 22 tells us our righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So as believers in the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, guess what? You do not have to worry about what you're going to eat. You do not have to worry about what you're going to wear. I, I know you crave it. I'm still thinking about that carrot cake. I, I got you. But we don't have to worry about our provision because God tells us that because of our righteousness, because Jesus Christ, he knows what you need before you even need it. So live freely as a child of God. Psalm 145, 16. Listen what God does for us. He opens his hand and satisfies the desires of every living thing. Money. Money prevents us from receiving what God has in store for us. Worry of money, the love of money, prevents us from being free and certainly from living a life rooted in generosity. Money is a trap. Money is a snare. Money is a pegas. You know what that is? A pegas? False God. Pardon me? False God. False God. Anybody familiar with the Trojan horse? W what happened? W what, what have we got?
Mm. That's what money is for us. It appears nice, it appears large and majestic. But if we allow that craving to overtake us, it will come slit our throats in the middle of the night and wipe us out from living the life that God intends us to live. And so he tells us to be free of that. Those who don't have often see money as a solution to all of life's problems, but God calls us to be content where we are in life and give freely of ourselves. God's invitation to us is to give of what we have because they are his gifts to us and trust that as we give our time, talent, and treasures and seek to build the kingdom of God, he knows what you need and will provide for all of it. Family, when we stop focusing on possessions and break free to live life, others are able to enjoy life with us. Are we prepared to live simply so that others can simply live? It's an awesome reality to be free and to allow yourself to experience who God created you to be. And that, my dear friends, is something money cannot buy. From Generosity, page 29, we will learn about some of the hindrances of giving. Fear, worry, greed, loss. These and many more can easily distract us from a pattern of consistent and joyful generosity. Yet it's comforting to know that Jesus tackled all of these issues as he began his ministry. So this week, you will be studying his teachings and warnings about the pitfalls of your money, and your stuff. And by moving away from these pitfalls, we'll naturally move toward freedom that comes with a true, generous life. And so, three thoughts for this week. Generosity of our time and talents helps free us from the dangers of money. The antidote to materialism is being generous of ourselves. And finally, Generosity of our time and talents leads to a greater dependence on God. So dear friends, as the 31st approaches, don't dress as money, don't dress as ghosts and goblins, but be willing today and for eternity to be free and generous of yourselves and prevent all kinds of evil. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.